Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at these two copies of Enchanted Forest. This one here is my very original copy and this is a copy that I have just finished completing the colouring in. So I thought it would be really good fun to compare the two and uh, see how things have changed since I uh, first coloured the book. So let's have a look at the first page. Whoops. You can see quite a difference going on here. No background on this picture at all and uh, that's, that's uh, quite, it's a very sweet owl though. I rather like him. So that's fun. Now this one I did probably when it first came out, this book, and uh, this one I started straight after. So some of the pictures are quite different and some of them are similar-ish I would think. So uh, here is our nameplate. Um, the leaves are fairly similar actually but obviously that one's got a background and lots of sun, lots of shade all over it. I'm really sorry the sun's popped out again and uh, it's going to create a little bit of shadow in the video I'm afraid. So this page is interesting. I sort of went for some sort of weird psychedelic effect on the animals there, but this one, I didn't do anything at all. It's quite interesting. Now this one is my sepia effect map, which uh, I had fun with, and this one is multicolored, so uh, very different. And we have this sort of purple and uh, gold decadent swirls around the edge. And here's our next page. So compasses are reasonably similar. I've always loved doing blackberries, um, so I'd rather like those, but also these are a bit more purple in colour, which is interesting. I also find it interesting how the dragons, or griffins, I'm not sure what they are, uh, they're both red in the both pictures, and the castles are quite similarly coloured too. Now that's really interesting. Now this is a very brightly coloured Piece. Look at the difference. Really different interpretations of those. I must say I do like the purple trees though. They're rather fun. And turning over. Now it's quite a similar colour scheme for the owl. Quite cold colours which is rather nice. But this one is quite, it's again, you've got the same sort of autumnal colours. I guess these, um, these call for an autumnal theme but we've got no background at all on this. It's just white. So that's quite interesting. Oops. Now it's this is interesting. We've got a, f a palette of sort of autumnal shades here, whereas this one's quite different. On here, I've tried to do a little bit of a background. Not sure how well it shows up with sort of purple and blue colouring there, but I haven't done one on that one, which is quite interesting. And that's very brightly coloured. Look at the uh, colour of this stag. I don't know how easy it is to see. Oof. Whereas this one's rather more muted with its winter snowy theme and realistic colouring. Now, well that's interesting. We have a very similar looking page here with the a sort of fixed colour scheme for birds as we have there but this is quite different. I had a go at doing a background drawing these circles and things so that was fun but I left some of these leaf work open to show the background through. Now that one reminds me a little of this one but uh, the colours are the same but I did it quite differently in each book which is quite fun. Uh -uh. Now these are different too. Now this one, the colours of the animals and things are quite similar. We've got a bit of a background going on on this one and here. And we've got a moon here. I was again thinking of the rabbit's wedding for both of these but this one was in a romantic moonlight setting. Now I think I did these animals with a in this book with a, um, a sort of seasonal theme. So I think we have autumn and winter there, I think. Whereas here we have our sort of Easter interpretation and just a blue and white um, attempt there. Let's have a look at what we've done here. Ah yes, this page I wasn't happy with. I liked this side and I wanted to sort of reverse it here and try a background, but for, I. I thought I could make the background blend together but I just 
didn't quite have the right skills to be able to know how to do that. Now here's our acorn pages. So that's interesting how different they are in that this one I tried different colours for the different acorns which is quite fun whereas here I kept them all the same. And this is, um, that box there wasn't done by me, um, my niece and nephew did that one. So uh, this is the only one to go by, but those blackberries, I just love colouring them. I was, when they, I left them with my book and they disappeared off and I went, I disappeared off and they said, oh, we've coloured this in. And although I was absolutely delighted they coloured it in, I was like, oh, no blackberries for me to colour then. They didn't even leave me any to do. But anyway, that was, that was, uh, that was fine. I've got another copy of this book. I can have another go. And here we have Mr. Squirrel and Fox. This is, I think this must be our wintry winter fox. And here quite, these two are quite similar, I think. Very interesting. Whereas these two, quite different. And this background, I have to say, was done from a Helen Elliston tutorial from one of her books. And here we have, this is one of my favourite pages in the book. And what a difference between my interpretation. Here, going for a blue background, which is not particularly well executed, I have to say, quite stripy. I remember taking so long on it and getting a little bit disappointed because it looks like it's raining, it's so stripy. Whereas this one, I used some Prismacolors for most of that and, so it, and a blending pencil, so I was able to get it to look much nicer. Now both of these have a background. Again, we've got quite a stripy effect on this one. This one's got a little bit of a one as well. The backgrounds aren't always that easy, but uh, quite a difference here. This tree trunk's quite pale. I prefer this darker one, I have to say. And my path is drawn in a different place. I quite like the angled one though. Hmm. Now these two have both gone for a blue background. Very interesting, but there's a more of a difference in color in the leaves in that one. Now this one. Now I like how I did this with combining lots of different colours together to make the flowers, although the blending is not brilliant. I like the colours, I'm sorry about that sun. It's really uh, making a nuisance of itself again, isn't it? But this one having a more um, contained palette is, uh, I also like, so. And this one's got a bit of, um, I did a bit of a background underneath and on the sky, just very gentle pencil. It might not be easy to see. It's not particularly neat though, so maybe it's better that you can't see. <laughs> and let's see what I did with these pages. Wow. So we've got orange, um, orange? No, orange here. Yellow and purple. I like that. It's not very neat, but I like the colours. And this is so vibrant. Crikey me. Wow. Wow, we have a multicoloured tree. Look at that. That's very creative of me, very forward thinking, and a green castle and purple soil. Wow, really different. I love this tree with all different colour leaves. Very different to this, much more muted, much more, should I say, realistic in colour, not in style. That's interesting. We have another one that's just quite random colours, which is fun. Oops, it doesn't want to turn over though. Hmm, we have a go at a background on that one. So we've got a sort of orange fading to yellow, but it's quite scruffy. I can see I found that really difficult, I remember. But for this one, I just didn't bother. So maybe this one is a well worth a star for effort. And uh, the tree, that one looks quite different to this, whereas I tied that one in. So that's interesting. Now, I really am not keen on what I did here with the pastel back. The pastel background's fine, but this orange, not liking that. Whereas this, I really like. I love these light colours. Really pretty. Ah, wow. Look at that. Pink and pink. Pink and pink. How very interesting. There's a few differences with the present and things. The birds are blue. How fascinating. I've done it the same colour. 
Wow, interesting. And the feathers, they look quite different. Obviously I've tied this in with the pink and purple there, so that's fun. Hmm. A similar technique being used, which is interesting. Now here we have the tree, both a sort of goldy yellowy trunk, which is really interesting. We have some blue leaves here and red. It's very daring of me again to do these colours. I mean these, although they are red, they're more autumnal shades, whereas this is more of a pinky red. So that's interesting. And a purple house, whereas a brown house. Now backgrounds galore. This done with Holbein pastel tone pencils and I wanted a sort of really muted browny tone whereas these are all over the place, brightly coloured, each with their own theme which is really interesting. Now these two are interesting as well in that these two are matching so we've got matching leaves and backgrounds whereas these two aren't. I love these autumnal leaves on this one, that's really pretty. Um, but this one isn't. I've tried to do a gold colour on there and a silver but I didn't really know how to do it um, so well as I do now. But we're all still learning aren't we? Okay, now this page, look at the bright colours in there. How very interesting and actually this colour here is very similar to my underground room but my uh, my pebbles and stones are really not uh, not up to scratch in this one but hey ho I do like these psychedelic mushrooms though it's fun I've had to go to a background to give myself some brownie points for that now we have a it's very stripy sky I remember thinking I was going to do some sort of um, blended sky I had no clue I just sort of assumed that somehow they would just effortlessly flow from one colour to another but no I now know that that is not what happens. Now, this one is interesting. As this one is a uh, Chris Cheng tutorial, this half. Um, I didn't do the tutorial, I just copied her picture and then continued in her style over here. And this one isn't, this is just me. And uh, I find that quite fun. I like the fish, to say. Ah, uh, now interesting. We've got backgrounds again going on with these. Um, blue skies, a bit um, scruffy, but that's okay. I'm learning here. I think it's getting much better um, because I don't. This book is actually was coloured in order, so I did it from front to back. So you should we should see improvement going through. Now I had an attempt at a sky in this one, which is interesting. Did the dragon, look at the colour of the dragonflies. Well, a lot of it is similar colours actually, look at all those oranges. How interesting, and look at his eyes, lovely colour eyes. Now, this one has got a Posca pen background, although that one is done in pencil. And this one I've done a sort of stripy grey background to make it look like night. I think it was probably black but only one layer. So that and I've left white for the bubbles, which is in, whereas here I've got a pen and dotted. I think I didn't have pens then. And we've got our river scene, which is quite fun. I've seen some really this one I did with my niece and nephew. I've seen some beautiful ones with lovely backgrounds and things which I'm gonna have a go at next time I do it. And we have our skull. Now I remember doing the skull. I was absolutely determined I wanted to make it friendly and happy so I did it orange in the background and then we've got all our leafy colours. There's a bit of dark here, it's not easy to see, just a little bit of grey in, in these gaps whereas here I left it white behind so that's interesting. Now this is my grayscale picture, it's actually done with a graphite pencil um, hence the, it's really smudging on the page, next page. I'm wondering actually whether this is actually coloured in or whether it's just smudged from the other side. don't know. And this was my winter looking one with, uh, with greys and, and uh, wintry colours. So this page I really struggled to know what to do with it. So I'm not 
I wasn't very happy with it I remember when I finished it whereas I decided on this one to make it leafy and vibrant and therefore I was then happy with it when I was done and the unicorns here I decided to sort of ignore these little markings that Johanna's put on them whereas that one I used them for shading so they therefore look quite different and also look at these are gold as well but the, my my style of doing gold has changed our sun's come out again across the page just to make the viewing difficult now interestingly this one has got a background just a light green it's quite might be hard for you to see whereas this one I didn't bother I think I'm getting better at deciding whether I'm in the mood for a background or not and thinking nah don't worry about it and we have our bird and look at the eggs they were sort of speckledy eggs and a really interesting colour on that one I love this colour is really pretty under there they've both got a sun which is interesting oh yes now this is an interesting one here this background looks really scruffy it's very hard to see and I used a pencil that I bought that had four different colours in the lead and I thought that when I coloured with it they would just blend together and they didn't they just it just get odd patches of different colours so it's a little bit strange but there we go but I did the two pages as separate so the griffins and things are different colours to each other but this is an interesting background pink to yellow which uh, which is fun but I just did blue on this page but I'm not very keen on my red interpretation of the frame there okay so this one's done with fine liners and uh, just blocky colour because it of the detail ways. This one's done with pencil and I've even shaded here which is really pretty. I like that. I prefer that one. And we have our gate. My idea of shiny stars but I couldn't really blend them into the background so uh, I don't think I was very happy with that when I finished it. It wasn't what I wanted from it. And now we have our two padlocks both an interpretation of gold but you can see I've got a different style here than I had here so that's really interesting and the line I remember that background on the line took me such a long time but uh, I think it works I think the line really stands out here from that so that's interesting we have our door I've always enjoyed doing this I remember being really proud when I finished that one and really pleased with it and the same when I did this one as well and they must have been done a very long time apart I'm thinking from looking at them this one's got little splodges of moss on the door I remember that and a more friendly looking windows and lion than this one now here I try to draw in the symbols which is what we're supposed to do and try and do some gold around the edge of here whereas this one I bottled out and didn't do any drawing so uh, that's a bit naughty of me and we have this page which is fairly similar actually except here the butterfly I try to tone it in with the autumnal theme which I didn't worry about doing here and we have our dragons now it's, a bit, it's going to be difficult to see the whole dragons I'm going to open them all up now the back one the two dragons are the same but this one I remember doing this green one and then this this uh, multicoloured one has a graphite pencil background I think yeah yeah it does it's very faint though so that's interesting so we have four dragons well two being very similar so there we are there is the comparison of the uh, two books so that was fun I hope you enjoyed it um, thank you very much for watching and happy colouring <laughs>